Barbara was sure the ritual worked. She stood up from the pentagram as five wicks slowly swirled the, their smoke in the room. Weather seemed angry, lightning flashed and roared through the, cost, the coastal home, and suddenly the lights went out. Damn the power. Let him come, she thought to herself as she calmly went downstairs in the dark. She prepared some tea on the stove and waited. As her chamomile st steeped, she again thought about how unfair it had been to take him so soon. Only eight years old. Sure things hadn't been easy, but she had put all the bottles away. Things were different now. She heard three distinct knocks from the front door. Excitedly, she ran to swing it open, only to find no one there. She, she left it open as a welcome invitation. Knocks from the back door drew her to the spot on the doorway some days well. She left it open too. Mist from the rain collected on the tile floor. She was about to take a sip. She felt the presence behind her. He was here. She whirled around to see her boy. His face obscured by the shadows. But his brown shaggy hair and favorite flannel shirt Arctic well enough. She ran to hug him and found he was incredibly heavy, much heavier than she remembered only a few weeks ago. Hello, Mommy, said Michael. Oh, my boy, things will be so different, so much happier. Now that you're here, do you want- I want to play a game, Mommy, Michael interrupted. There was something un unnatural in the tone of you used for the word. Why don't you run and hide? I'm going to catch you. This will be a lot of fun. Are you sure? Do it! His voice boomed through the house. Uneasily, she agreed as Michael began to count. She was going to hide in the pantry when she heard a growling noise, like the low mumble of a distant earthquake. She realized it was coming from Michael. As he counted, she realized she had made a mistake. Fifteen? Fourteen? You better hide better than that, Mommy. Some things are better left as they are. But I'm here now. His boy's voice became more and more tinged with that horrific low grumble. The sound of a blade pulled from the kitchen butcher block alerted her ears to danger. Yes, this had been a mistake. A tense collapse of thunder blocked further sound race upstairs to the master bedroom, locked the door. Like a child, she cowered in the closet and waited. Ten, nine, eight. I don't know why you'd want me back, Mommy. She heard his words as leaning feet ascended the stairs. You weren't nice to Michael. Seven, six, five, four. She started to cry frantically, curled up in the corner of her closet. She was trapped. She felt as if she couldn't breathe. As a locked bedroom door easily sprang open. Three, two, Silence. She listened as a storm of calm that sudden whisper emanated from directly behind the closet door. In fact, Mommy, Michael hates you, so he left you behind and sent me instead. The door flung open a bowl of lightning, illuminated rows of jagged, glinting white teeth crowding Michael's mouth like a shark's jaw. The storm subsided, her tea grew cold.